I'm John Hanna for CDTV.net, and we are here with Dr. Bazam Damaj, the CEO of Apricos Bio. Thanks for joining us. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure to be here. Thank you, sir. Now, um, when I spoke to you on the phone, you just got the approval from the Canadian FDA version, which is, uh, what, what is the name of the... Can Health Canada. Health Canada. And what happened since then? Well, um, since then, you know, we, we received the approval in, in November for Viteros as first-line therapy for erectile dysfunction. And, and since then, we... Um, pushed more on the commercial partnerships and on the manufacturing to have it ready for marketing in Canada. Um, as you know, we were able to close two partnerships uh, uh, for Viteros in Italy and for the Gulf and part of the Middle East uh, uh, since, since we spoke in, uh, in November. So we've made quite a bit of progress actually on that front. So pretty much on that, uh, on that side of things, when are people going to see this thing on their uh, uh, pharmacy shops or doctor's office? Well, I mean, uh, from the manufacturing side, we expect the drug to be ready for, uh, uh, for commercialization in September of this year in Canada. Of course, that's pending our uh, uh, commercial partner in Canada, which we, we hope to be able to announce um, uh, in the coming uh, few months. Now, okay, so you, you, you're going to be able to have Canada like in September. Uh, who's the other countries that's going to be in line after Canada? So we already have guidance uh, from uh, the European uh, agencies uh, for Viteros and we have a filing date of um, April of this year. Uh, following that we have some early guidance from the agencies in the Gulf, Middle East and, um, and Israel. So, and we expect also to have filing in those countries uh, in, the, in the coming uh, few months. Okay, so we're pretty much covered the international side of things. Let's talk about the U.S. side. When are we going to see this in the U.S.? In the U.S., we, as you know, uh, the NDA was filed uh, through our uh, partner Warner Chilcott, and uh, we are waiting for a response from the FDA on the NDA file. We are hoping to receive um, uh, an answer um, any time now. So. Okay, so when you get that answer, um, how many months do you foresee this becoming more uh, commercially available? That will depend on the uh, commercial plans of Warner Chilcott, who, who owns the rights now for the US, um, and, and they would have to answer for that. We, from our end, we hope to see it as soon as, as possible in the, in the US market. Where are you now with, uh, with regards to the cash flow of the company? Um, we did a round of financing for about $10 million um, a couple of months ago and um, we have about 10 million dollars in the bank right now so we have a good, very good uh, financial situation uh, and of course we expect revenues from the commercial partnerships that we announced and we're going to announce in the near future and hopefully when, Novart, when Viteros um, uh, becomes available on the Canadian market we will also actually start receiving revenues from the commercialization of Viteros there. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at my notes here, just wanted to let you know mm -hmm. what I'm looking down here. Um, sure. The uh, Tell us about the white towers and the drug delivery technology of that particular... Uh sure. So Viteros incorporates our proprietary drug delivery technology called NexAct. And, and NexAct is a small molecule that loosens the tight junction between cells and enables the drug to permeate and go to the bloodstream. Okay. Um, and that, that, that drug delivery technology now is, of course, clinically validated with the approval of Viteros. Um, and... Um, it, it has a, a lot of advantages. First, it's, it's a patented proprietary technology that we have uh, coverage up to 2028, depending on the countries. Uh, second, it's very safe. Uh, the serious adverse effects from the Viteros trials were uh, zero. Um, and we have a safety dossier in about a uh, li little bit under 5,000 patients. And it works with, a, with a, uh, a different type of drugs from small molecules to antibodies to sRNAs to um, peptides and proteins. And also it is very effective in delivering drugs uh, through the skin, transdermally, orally, um, uh, buccal routes, uh, ophthalmic, uh, and, and rectal. So it's really, uh, it's a very effective uh, and a very uh, uh, a diverse, drug, uh, diverse drug delivery technology. So can you use this technology with other drugs? 
Of course, you, you can use it with, with uh, an infinite number of drugs. Um, and, and the nice thing about this technology is that not only we can use it to develop our own drugs and partner them, we can also, uh, we're working on trying to partner and license it to other pharmaceutical companies so they can use it with their own drugs to have a much better uh, delivery uh, of, of their drugs. Now, um, doctors might say, or uh, investors might actually uh, think that this is pretty much an application-based delivery mechanism, right? Um, the, the next act actually is a small molecule called DDAIP, and it is that small molecule that binds to the, to the drug and then enables it to go through the skin. Okay. So the question is that um, people might be thinking uh, ingesting the drug or getting an injection would be a far more uh, efficient way of getting the uh, required uh, performance of the drug. What do you say about those uh, questions? Well, those are valid questions and I can tell you from the clinical trials that, that, that we have done, uh, we have uh, compared on the hemodynamic study the injectable form of the drug alprostadol uh, and we compared it to other drugs like Viagra for example and, and first we have seen a much faster onset than Viagra. Uh, we have seen a much better consistent blood flow than Viagra, and we were equivalent to the injection uh, 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 form of alprostadol. So actually, it, it is it is not um, it is not a, a much uh, weaker delivery form. It's actually equivalent um, to the uh, to, to the oral or to the injectable. And as a result of the good clinical efficacy we received, Health Canada approved it as a first-line therapy for erectile dysfunction. Um, I mean, like you said, there, there's a whole a limited range of uh, potential applications out there, right? It's it's the, the, it's a whole range of unlimited actually applications out there. I mean, it, it can be applied to to, ver to 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 a multitude of drugs, and we can apply it over and over and over again. There's really uh, the, the 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 limit is the sky for this technology. Now, who who? Do you guys have the patent for this technology? Yes, we actually, the company developed this technology and owns the patents for this technology. So you have, you said 13 products and you have Vitaris which is on now on, on, in, uh, in Canada and some other uh, parts of the world. Uh, are you looking for more partners in all those different 13 products, all in all? Of course, we're looking to partner all our products, and, and not just only in Canada. I mean, you know, we own the rights for the, all those products uh, worldwide. So, so we are looking to partner them in the U.S., uh, in, in Europe, uh, globally, uh, for, for all the products we have in the pipeline, yes, definitely. And we are actively seeking those parts and in discussion with, with potential partners for those. So basically, you cannot just have one partner for all of the year 13, but you can potentially have 13 partners. Oh, we, we probably might have 13 partners or more. I mean, you know, the, each, each, each uh, potential partner would have an expertise in his, in his disease uh -huh. area, depending on their sales force, uh, on their market presence, and then we would partner with the best company that can move this product um, uh, forward uh, in there. I mean, uh, and again, I mean, you know, also on the next act deals that, you know, we are pushing uh, a lot to do, to do deals in the U.S. with, with U.S. companies. Uh, and remember, the U.S. Is, is one of the largest markets out there, and we want to have a strong presence in this market. Okay, that's pretty much my next question. What other drugs do you have in your pipeline right now? So the total pipeline we have is 13 products, uh, including Privanco, uh, Femprox, Mycova, uh, Rava, um, we have a lidocaine proprietary formulation, a Soriva, um, Rava, and we have um, also um, our uh, insulin uh, proprietary formulation, our rituximab proprietary formulation, 5-FU and paclitaxel, and Nupin. So we have a very extensive pipeline that's really across all the development stages and across a multitude of disease area from oncology, uh, immunology, anti-infectives, uh, sexual dysfunction, uh, uh, we have also in pain, uh, and we're also exploring some, some, um, some cosmetic applications in, in, in for delivery of collagen and so forth. You pretty much answered my question, which is pretty much what are they basically those? I mean, those are like drug names, but I wanted to get some more information about the background of it, and you just mentioned yes. it. Now, what is the next three to six months uh, and uh, 12 months outlook of the company? What are the most um, uh, potential for your drugs to be accepted by the market? 
Well, I mean, the next, the next two drugs in line are my, mycova for onychomycosis and femprox for female sexual arousal disorder. Uh, and as I mentioned in my last corporate presentation, um, uh, that we are currently in the process of uh, uh, initiating discussions with the different regulatory um, health agencies in order to get guidance to file for market authorization for both of those drugs. In addition, we are actually uh, uh, furthering our discussions in order to add the premature ejaculation indication to Viteros uh, in the U.S. and in, uh, in Canada. Okay, so what are you looking for uh, with regards to uh, different countries? I mean, the U.S. You, uh, I mean, I've just the reason why I wanted to go back to the U.S. because we're in the U.S. market, right? So, what do you see in the U.S. within the next uh, one year, two years, three years, aside from the uh, company that's going to be carrying the uh, erectile dysfunction drug? Yeah, I think the importance of of having Viteros approved of truth in the U.S. not only to have a drug approved in the U.S. I think also the most important is once this drug is approved, the approval process using this technology for dermal application would be through a regulatory process called 505B2. And the regulatory approval process of 505B2 becomes a bioequivalency study, which means you would, you would do your, your, your drug formulation and you just compare the blood levels to the generic drug on the market. And then you would move on to file an ANDA. So basically within a year time or less, you can start having drugs on the market, actually multiple drugs on the market. So the potential for that the U.S. market is really huge beyond just Viteros as a drug approved. Oh, there you go. Okay, so once you get the uh, 505... B2. B2. Uh, that gives you guys a certain classification. Then you can start putting in more. Exactly. Because exactly. right now, the, the FDA has a little bit more... Um, um, uh, they've approved less in the past year or so. Um, I think. Yeah, the drugs getting approved are less and less. The right. FDA, you know, is now for, 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 from our end, the drug has requested a phase one, phase two, phase three, you know, but once it becomes a 505B2 a regulatory path, then it's a bioequivalency study that you move forward with. Okay. Much yes. faster, much cheaper, and you can, you can actually have a lot of drugs actually approved in, in that way. I think it's most important for us and for the, for the, for the shareholders of the public to know that our goal is to really uh, be uh, cash flow positive by the end of 2011. That is the goal that we are moving uh, towards uh, this year. And you see that because of the uh, Canadian uh, implementation or, or distribution by September time frame? Actually, we see that from the commercial partnerships we are doing, and okay, that's excluding that's the, the, the commercialization of Viteros on, on, on the market. We are hoping that uh, the commercialization of Viteros and having it on the market will sustain our cash flow and move us to profitability after that. Okay, nice. And uh, your current burn rate is? Um, the current burn rate of the company is, is around six, um, um, seven million a year. Okay. And um, so, pretty much, what are you, what are you, uh, uh, what, what are you looking for to happen within now and at the end of this year? Well, a lot of things, actually. I mean, on, on the commercialization part of it, of course, we, we're looking to, to announce our, um, our partner in Canada, our partner in, 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 in the rest of the European countries, uh, you know, Africa, uh, Latin America, and, and be able to, uh, to, to, to see the cash flow coming from the upfront payment of those deals. Also, what we're looking to, to, to see is Viteros being on the market in, in, in Canada as, 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 and sales starting to get from that drug. In addition, we're looking to, uh, uh, on, on Viteros to, to add uh, uh, the premature ejaculation as, as another indication. And also, we are looking and, and, and moving forward towards requesting meetings with the different health agencies for filing for marketing approval of Mycova and Femprox. So a lot of things are happening on, 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 on multiple ends pushing our products and drugs towards the approval stage and moving forward with our commercialization and commercial strategy for Viteros. Nice. Uh, any other things you might want to add? Yes. I, I mean, I, I think it's, it's important for, for people to realize that the company really is, 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 a, is a revenue generating company. Uh, you know, we, um, 
we have a very good cash position, um, we're much stronger than before, a very strong pipeline uh, with multiple drugs on the verge of, of, of filing for approval, um, moving forward towards a cash flow positive uh, company by the end of 2011, and now it's a clinically uh, uh, validated and patented drug delivery technology that a lot of companies can use now uh, to move to, to, to better deliver more uh, drugs uh, uh, to patients. That's uh, Dr. Bazam Damaj, uh, CEO of Apricos Bio, and I'm John Hanna for CDTV.net. Thank you. Thank you, John. Thank you.